what happened to this woman. Nobody really knows who did it. Some terrible things occurred before she died. That much is clear by this case. The Woodlawn Jane Doe was a young woman who was discovered murdered on September 12, 1976 in Woodlawn, Baltimore County, Maryland. The victim has been linked to regions in Massachusetts and New York. Various investigations have been conducted in the case. Recent developments have indicated she was possibly a teenage immigrant from Central or South America who had lived in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, although the family of the individual has yet to be located. On September 12, 1976, at 10.20 a.m., the body of a 15 to 30 year old woman was found partially wrapped in a white sheet. She had been beaten, strangled and raped. The rape had been severe as it caused bleeding that had seeped into her clothing. She likely died at a different location and had been transported to the side of Dogwood Road near the back gate of a cemetery. It is possible that a Ford Econoline van may be linked to the case as one was seen near the location of the body an hour before it was found. The victim wore a turquoise colored stone bead tied to a rawhide string as a necklace. Also in her possession were two brass keys, one believed to be for a house and the other for a night latch. They were found attached to a safety pin in one of the pockets of a pair of tan yellow jeans. She wore a white and tan shirt, a white bra and distinctive knee-high socks with multicolored stripes. A single light tan moccasin with twin laces and a rubber sole was found near the body. It is believed to have been worn by the victim. Other pieces of cloth were also found on the body. Two bandanas and a bag for grass seeds were found over her face. These had been fastened behind her neck in a square knot. One bandana was blue and white and the other was orange and white. The orange and white bandana was found to have holes cut in it to fit the locations of her eyes and nose. Besides the bag over her face, a piece of the grass seed bag was found in her throat. This was determined to have been the cause of her death along with ligature strangulation. The Back Rat, Farm Bureau Association Grass Seat, Lexington. Additionally, the hands had been bound behind her back with some sort of bandage in noticeably high quality knots. An extremely large amount of a sedative drug, chlorpromazine, was found in the victim's stomach. Chlorpromazine is used to treat schizophrenia, which led to a theory linking the victim or those responsible for her murder to a mental institution. Additionally, the sheet that was wrapped around her body was consistent with those provided at inpatient institutions. Examiners measured the victim and concluded that she weighed between 149 and 159 pounds and was 5 feet 6 to 5 feet 9 inches tall. The blood type of the victim was determined to be O positive. There had been evidence that she had been treated by a dentist. The victim had three of her molars removed and had fillings in the remaining five. Because of the amount and quality of the dental care, authorities surmised that she did not come from a background of poverty. One of her other teeth was crooked. A poorly tattooed pair of letters, possibly initials, was found on her left arm. It contained two letters, believed to be JP, SS, JB, or a similar letter combination. She had her ears pierced and a scar on her upper right thigh. A widow's peak was noted on the victim's forehead. She had dark brown to black shoulder length hair with a wavy texture and brown eyes. She had a dark olive complexion. The exact race and ethnicity of the victim puzzled investigators and medical examiners, but it is believed that she may have been white. Shortly after the body was found, fingerprint and dental information were collected to establish its identity. Her fingerprints were added to national databases as well as her dental chart, yet no match has ever been made. Many missing women from across the United States have since been eliminated as possible identities for Woodlawn Jane Doe. The County Police Department currently offers a cash reward of $2,000 for information about this case. A notable case was that of Maria Angiras, a teen that had run away from her Connecticut home in February 1976. 
The victim's face has been reconstructed multiple times for release to the public. Three versions exist that were rendered by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Other sketches of her also exist. The local police department provided an age regression and an additional reconstruction created by Eve Grant, hoping to provide an estimation of her appearance at a younger age in case she was a runaway or someone knew her at an earlier period of her life. One of the keys which the victim carried was made in Fitchburg, Massachusetts and had the letters and numbers DB09212 stamped onto it. The grass seed bag was connected to a factory in Buffalo, New York. It had been sold exclusively in Massachusetts, cities of Waltham, Rochdale, Lowell, South Weymouth and Greenfield. Years before the murder, production of this type of bag had been halted. Forensic pollen analysis of the item found with the body indicated she had spent time in a populous area such as Boston, Massachusetts or New York. These results were aided by the detection of setter and hemlock pollen, which possibly originated from a site such as the New York Botanical Garden or Harvard University. The case has been featured on America's Most Wanted. Leads were processed but did not lead to the victim's identity or that to her killer or killers. A break in the case was announced in December 2015 by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children after the Baltimore County Police received a tip. A suitable match was discovered, being described as a Puerto Rican or Colombian teenager that had moved to Boston, Massachusetts with her parents and as many as five siblings. The explanation for the tattoo of JP on her arm was announced to possibly be the initials for a part of the city known as Jamaica Plain, where the possible match lived, on Forbes Street. Potential school locations were also included. The department has had difficulties finding the relatives of the girl putting the investigation on halt, which is a pretty disturbing thing as well, because with all these Jane Doe's and John Doe's, I mean they have family, that much is clear. Otherwise, they wouldn't even exist. But the thing is, with this case as well, again, we're dealing with a murder case where the family isn't coming forward. So that could mean two things. Either they are involved again, or they really have no idea what happened to their daughter. Which, it's so, it's so difficult for me to grasp how that even can be the case. It's also disturbing to know that there was a huge amount of drugs in her stomach that was clearly used for devious purposes. However, did she get those drugs because she herself was mentally ill or because the people or person that killed her worked as they speculate in a mental institution, drugged this woman randomly or for whatever reason that they had at the time, raped her and then killed her. That's also pretty disturbing because people like that, you're normally they should be out there helping people. If you work in a mental institution, your job is to help the patients, not misuse any of the drugs or other things that you would have in your possession. It's disturbing to know that for such a long time already, she has never been identified, no family has come forward, and someone got away with murder. Like it happens a lot in this world. Either way, I figured I'd put this story out there as well so more people can know about it. That's the drill on Creepy News. As always, dear viewer, have sweet dreams.